Alpha Omega London, makers of shoes, creator of waves in the fashion industry, introduces the Fashion Vanguards podcast. Our aim is simple, to open minds, listen to opinions, share knowledge and start conversations. Our podcast series unravels fashion's many guises and tackles head on the current issues that matter, getting honest views from the mouths that matter. We at Fashion Vanguards believe it is time to stop talking and make change. The labeling of mental disorders or mental illnesses carries social stigma and negative connotations which prevent us from tackling the issue. In this series, we address the growing concerns of more and more people who are suffering or have recovered from mental ill health within the fashion industry and the creative sector as a whole. Let's welcome our panelists. Hi, I'm Nazina, bastion of creativity, instigator of change within the fashion sector. Hi, my name is Clara. I uh, run an experimental music theatre company in London and I'm interested in finding different processes for collaborative creating. Hi, I'm Julia. I'm currently a student at Condé Nast College and I major in fashion communications. Hi there, I'm Diana. I'm a second year student in London College of Fashion, studying fashion design and development, and I'm very interested in changing the mindset towards the fashion industry. I'm Ashwini Deshpande, designer, dancer, dreamer, and host of the Fashion Vanguard podcasts. I go to London College of Fashion and hope to change the world one dress at a time. Thanks for tuning in to the Fashion Vanguard's mental health series. When you think of McQueen, Kate Spade, Isabella Blow, they all have something in common the suffering from mental illnesses. But another thing that they share in common is that both them and their untimely demise have been glorified. They're thought of as tortured geniuses. Does the fashion industry romanticize the concept of the tortured genius, which mainly stems from film, art, and the music industries? Is that healthy for other creatives? There is, from an industry perspective, um, this element of romanticizing the concept of a tortured genius only because I believe that sensationalism, scandal, danger, success, fame, they all make the industry so attractive and alluring. I almost feel that this is sort of like an added buffer of PR, you know, that's been done to make the industry far more relevant from a cultural perspective year upon year upon year upon year. Who kind of follows a boring designer or somebody who, you know, sleeps at seven o'clock, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, (laughs) etc. Not many people do. You know, we want to, you know, sort of follow designers who've kind of self-combusted and had a mental meltdown. Oh, definitely. I mean, as we discussed earlier um, about sort of authenticity on Instagram and needing to be sort of original and everything this sort of takes that to a different height doesn't it it's almost the same thing but if you're if you're normal it's almost like you're not good enough to be a designer you need to be crazy you need to be someone who's completely different from the crowd to actually be recognized as a successful designer as or as anyone successful in the creative industry but in this wanting to I guess portray this image of like this crazy designer and all of that then it doesn't it do you guys think it could also become like a self-fulfilling prophecy of like you make yourself think that you have to be tortured like I've experienced this with a few people where I know that you have come from a privileged background and you know da 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 and then they kind of can almost convince themselves that their suffering is bigger than it is because you think that you have to have some like I don't know something that's that adds like like in like a shock factor yeah. almost or like almost something that makes you so yeah. your work is not important yeah. enough unless you've been through certain things or, or it so was like too easy victimization yeah. as well right yeah. but then you still have mental health right because if you put yourself through this you know what i mean mm. so it's still something as well there i guess but just going back to what i said like about the self-fulfilling prophecy it's like almost like a placebo effect in a way like you put it in your mind and like just not to get all like spiritual or anything but Mm -hmm. sort of like Mm -hmm. the um if if any of you have read the secret sort of like what you give is what you get you know what I mean like whatever you put out there and you like attracting certain things is like what you're gonna end up getting and so how authentic is that to go yeah if you you keep telling yourself that you're unhappy you're going to be unhappy yeah and on the flip side as well if you keep telling yourself that you're happy you you will be what kind of what expressions is that because I'm I'm not in the fashion industry, so I'm not familiar with the uh, with the codes of behaviour. But what kind of expressions is this kind of 
tortured genius figure allowed to have? Because I like the the reason I'm asking this is because I think in in the performing arts there is this uh, belief in in like you know there's there's still this kind of figure of the of the genius director hanging out, ge- the genius conductor, and they are all exclusively horrible men who just mistreat people. And I think like and with the, and there I always feel like is this a tortured genius or is it just leeway for people to behave, mm. you know? In a True. horrible way. So yeah. I guess like the and, mm. and because there is the aggressive there is the aggressive way of going about your own mental health and that kind of like a more extroverted way. And then there is the introvert way. And I guess like it you know, like I guess the question is are the people in the uh, are the, the geniuses, quote unquote, of the fashion industry, regardless of gender, are allowed to be both inwardly sad and outwardly aggressive? Because I think that also has a massive impact on how you deal with your mental health is what kind of what forms of expressions you are allowed right right mm. and you know what that's interesting that you've said that because I personally believe and I'll, I'll respond to that as a designer I personally believe that you have a duty of care when you're a designer you have responsibility you have accountability um, for not just the output of your products or designs but more or less your you know what what sort of messages you're sending how you communicate with people um, and how that has been consumed how your products have been consumed and obviously if you are you know this this sort of raging genius who is just you know sort of exuding all this negative energy and and but, but creating incredible you know pieces um I still feel that that it, it it still it's still not valid enough because the aspect of you you know obviously making sure that you have a duty of care and 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 sending out the the positive vibes and and, and the positive messages if that's not efficiently done then your work doesn't matter how amazing it is is for me it's not it's not valid enough and that's that's mm-hmm. personally how I think the industry should almost respond. That the industry shouldn't. I think there's there's this blind um, sense of, um, or this is there's this welcome sense of ignorance. I think we like to ignore very difficult, um, very uncouth characters who, you know, tend to throw their weight around, tend to sort of act out negatively. I think it's really about like changing the narrative. Um, of of what is being put out as as normal, right? Like, um, I don't know what as you were talking about sort of like exploitation and assistance. I automatically thought of like the Devil Wears Prada and like the interesting narrative that it passes along, not only about like feminism and the fashion industry and working women and all of these different things, but just just to name a small example. But then I think it's like now with social media, I think there are a lot of negative sides, but I think that one of the beauties is that people can, you know, if used the right way actually see what it's really like and um i think that we are rewriting a lot of uh different narratives now you see a lot of people in power now um that were weren't before you see virgil abloh now rihanna like big people that are a part of fashion houses that aren't aren't built to succeed quote unquote you know what i mean um and so i think it's really just about seeing the real narrative of what is actually going on so that the actual so the so the real representation of it is is being passed along to the people who are consuming it in the first place mm. and then things can be normalized and it doesn't have to be a sort of torture genius right. um breakthrough dramatic story it can yeah. be just like a regular thing but also um in one sense the whole the, the whole idea of people being seen as certain stars and you know this person's an idol and that person is who you should aspire to be and this person you know you follow their lives and you just kind of want to know what they're up to want to know everything about them just that whole culture itself is kind of it's damaging as compared to you're not looking at just purely the garments you know what do, when you first think of Alice Anna McQueen you don't actually first think of the garments you think of him as a person you think of what he was like and then you think of his clothes as sort of um what came out of what he was like but I was just gonna say I mean it's just on sort of like the us putting people on like pedestals in general like Mm -hmm. I think that we're not prepared there's a really cool um body positive influencer that talks about this um where she sort of talks about how we as a society aren't prepared to look up to people or aspire to people who we think 
are like us because we mm. think that we automatically are not we're, we're too normal or we're not right. good enough so we are looking for this sort of like hero situation yeah. yeah exactly yeah. but I think that that can be damaging and then I think that that's where we, we sort of start talking about this because it's so kind of far removed right this concept of the torture genius because we don't go through that so we think it's almost like intriguing and curious but then when you actually delve deep in, in, and see what really that entails and the the reality of it mm. you know the the real re- terrible aspects and the, the real like um I'm losing my words but the real um negative impacts that that has on like a person then I don't think people would aspire to it necessarily I think like maybe the 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 one of the ways to tackle this is what we're doing right now is like finding a different way of telling stories about brand because like I, yeah you say like it's it's not about the garments it's about the guy behind the garments or the lady behind the garments or the trend the them behind the garments um but um i guess like that's also because that's how newspapers and films and all of these outlets have been writing the stories of certain garments of certain fashion trends and everything so maybe if we do do what what Alpha Omega does and we start making podcasts so we start making short films so we start doing documentaries absolutely we start working yes with theater companies just to bring just to bring us in um, <laughs> <laughs> you know um you know like what if like a fashion show was less about uh, having like a, a big designer come down at the end, yeah, and, like, or a big model, or a big model or something. Why don't we just like give it to a choir or something? Why don't we just why are all these clothes not made for a choir? And then it's the whole thing is packed into say an opera or something. And I think like if if that's if, a great idea actually. Yeah, no worries. You can not have that for free. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> oh, Jesus, I keep doing that. Um, okay, <laughs> we'll we'll talk after this. <laughs> Just a quick reminder, you're listening to the Fashion Vanguards podcast hosted by Alpha Mega London. Please subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on and give us a review. And if you would like to get in touch, please drop us a message at info at alphamegalondon.com. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. That would that would change the way because then you would have to think about okay so it's not just the designer who made the clothes it's also who produced this show who who's singing who's performing and who's true. doing who stitched the garments who yes. stitched the, that's another huge huge thing to actually put the people who work with the materials on stage like in some point. in some way we get yeah, exactly because like i mean the the people working on a i mean like the people on stage to talk about opera i mean that's there's, there's a huge problem there because everyone thinks so oh, you just like curtain opens and the stuff is there and they don't see the like miles and miles of tunnels of workshops that are behind this thing and i think like that's another thing let's put those machines like the 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 machine under the kind of very she- very kind of slick veneer of mm. this of the fashion industry just put them on stage as well and I think that but the question is do people want to see that it's a question of how you do it if it's well done and it looks good then yeah then they'll have to eat it yeah exactly that, that <laughs> change thing, their diet that's yeah. the thing. I don't think it's con- it's consumers fault it's the people who what I'm going to serve you right. exactly yeah. the, right. You know what I, I mean? I think it depends, also, though, because there are certain things that you have to cater to. Do you I think know what I've, I mean? I think I've heard so many times, oh, sex sells. No, 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 no. Mm. Like, intelligence could sell as well if you serve that, right. if you serve think, awareness, for example. I also think that the, the, I think the consumer story, I mean, like, the people who mainly tell the consumer story, you know, like, when people say, like, oh, like, climate change, you know, if only would people stop using the plastic straws, we would all be fine. <laughs> mm. But it isn't, right? It's the corporations that make most of the mess and and i think in a similar way why would any kind of old school designer want to rethink this kind of whole dynamic it's like in their interest to keep put it on the consumers right exactly why would they want to change something if they think that it's not gonna you know serve them any yeah. sort of purpose and like it's capitalism like they're making their yeah. money they have you know <laughs> yeah they have their ways of doing it they don't really want to change that to help people i mean <laughs> who cares about people yeah but that's what I'm saying. The people care about the people. So but that's I what I mean when I say like, like sort of like put your money where your mouth is. And like, you see the strength in numbers. Like you see the, you see the, when, when, when people sort of come together, like it's like this, but the whole plastic straws thing, as soon as we saw the, the turtle with um the straw up its nose and, and it went viral, people, I, if I ever ask for a, a plastic straw, my friends are all like, you're really going to drink a plastic straw? Like really? <laughs> like, and it was, a, it was a matter of like seconds, mm-hmm. but then like, 
do you see like it does come I, I think it is sort of like a synergy kind of um, environment where like it's it's equally the, the consumers and the designers but I also think that there is huge 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 values in listening to the consumers as well yeah so my question to you is the chicken or the egg the creativity or the trauma which is the result of the other or are they looped I believe the trauma should not be a pre- prerequisite to creativity I mean, if it's incidental, the artist turns negativity into something positive um, using creativity and art. But, I mean, what do you have to say about that? What do you think? I would, I'd like to start with the prejudice, um, <laughs> um, which is that I think the the time when the, with the, 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 the origins of this trauma narrative are always people who could afford to have a certain kind of trauma. I think that, like, in the time that we live in, I mean, we were, talk, we were talking about how you're basically available 24-7, you're not just a creator you're also your own model um you have to like you have to take care of your health you have to do, you have to um um be funny if you're an introverted well that's too bad because you better like take some antidepressants to turn yourself into an extrovert and all of these things and i think in that setup it's now impossible to then also put <laughs> it's almost like to then also sell a trauma as well um i think the um i think the trauma is a myth uh, that was made fashionable at a certain time and I think it's 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 about time that we get rid of that. I mean, it still doesn't mean that you need to film yourself eating like porridge at seven a.m. just before you go for a run, because that's also that's, that is admittedly pretty boring. But. <laughs> I mean, I think it also goes both ways in one sense, like the chicken or the egg thing. Like there's um, people who sort of go through trauma and create great things, and then there's people who see that, and then um, they're sort of forced to go through trauma to create those great things because of the working environments and things like that, because. Because of that genius, the work environment has become a certain way. So mm-hmm. it's almost mm-hmm. one affects the other. It's true. But then I think to some extent that they are then, um, you know, sort of in control of their destiny. They're in control of the path of their journey. And they should as much as possible try to choose paths which don't lead to destruction or self implosion they they actually you know inspire others to want to follow their path which is towards you know a a healthy you know direction yeah definitely I think it's important for um you know people who are successful to influence other people to um take the right uh routes to success Yeah. yeah I think people are starting to um just to kind of go off of this a little bit but still stay on topic I think people are starting to like the sort of more relatable um, I don't want to say influencer at mm. all, but that's the only word that's coming to mind. But I guess like people are ready to sort of at the same time that people do like to put people on a, sped- a pedestal and like there's this whole aspirational thing and da 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 da. Like I think people do like um, actresses and 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 models and people that they can relate to because it it makes you feel a part of something. It makes you feel represented. It makes you feel like you matter. It makes you feel like you have a voice because you see yourself in this person. So maybe this whole sort of tortured thing will hopefully maybe be a thing of not that people can't go through, you know, trauma and all right. of that, but that it it won't be as glamorized as it was um it's back true. then. It's true. I think cuz the days of Amy Winehouse and Yes. You know, all these these artists who were considered as tortured tortured artists. I think that's that's slightly declining. I, 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 I do hope definitely so. Yeah, definitely. See a that's true. Like yeah. if you look at the music industry, you do see a lot of just people who seem normal on Instagram, people who are going on vacation normally and just yeah. having a good time and yeah. at the same time they're winning Grammys. It's <sighs> you know, it's it's not like it used to be, that's for sure. So how does the idea of um, the torture genius and everything, how does this affect or influence the behavior and attitudes of young aspiring talents such as students within the sector? I think that a lot of times um, people that are aspiring to um, get into the sector, such as students, right, they're very ambitious and they're looking for a lot of times like a formula to success and they want to know how to do it and how to do it as quickly as possible, which we've touched on a few times. But um, I think that to have that as a sort of, um, if people take that as like the only route to kind of succeed, then I think that that can impact people extremely negatively. But um, hopefully, like we've said before, it will sort of start to change. And I think it has... um, started to change and maybe um the the impact can also be the flip side so that people see that the what what not to do unpaid internships and things where you know you're being exploited 
uh, people need to start taking action. People need to start speaking up about that and not feel like, okay, to be in the fashion industry, I need to do this. I have to go through this to be successful because yeah. that's not true. You can be successful and still be um, mentally healthy and yeah. be yeah. a normal human being, essentially. And also ethical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You could be yeah. successful if you're ethical because yeah. in the fashion industry, I don't know. I mean, I know why, but it's this <laughs> presumption that you you should do the unethical things that we all know what is happening right now, and that that's the the, the, the potion. That, yeah, that's the formula to be successful. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. you, you yeah. could and be. Yeah. you could be ethical, and you could be successful. I think our generation. Time, yeah. yeah, I think our generation has a good, a pretty good um, sort of understanding that it doesn't, it doesn't have to be that way. And I think we're pretty good at like sort of realizing that we can change things. And I think that very it's interesting greatly. event was the Copenhagen Fashion Summit, where they talked mm -hmm. actually about how they want to change and how young. Um, Uh, young professionals they want to change the fashion industry as well yeah I think that though, at the same time and I think it's worth mentioning that <clears throat> if we say that the tortured genius is a thing of the past I was just thinking that we should also still be aware of the fact that there are people who are like just mentally ill and some people self-medicate with alcohol some people self-medicate with drugs and I, I think like it would just be I think the the, the point is maybe not to go completely <clears throat> pardon me the other way from tortured genius to like healthy ethical person there is like a whole spectrum in between and i think if we're just to come back to like mental health attitudes in general i think the whole point is to like accept differences right absolutely 100%. but the, the issue with the industry is that there is a real um contrived attempt to really amplify the disorder the Disruption. This, this character this, this, of yeah. being the narrative. The, right? that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's something narrative. that it sells. So, it's almost like exactly. it, it's using that as yeah. a success. I mean, that's in the hands of marketing. the media, yeah. isn't it? That's, yeah. that's like the only media the show counts. Yeah. 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 Yes, absolutely. It's, it, it's, I think it's, I could imagine that it's like a similar thing in quite a lot of industries, although like fashion, obviously, more so because it's closer to the media. Yeah. Um, I think it was more. Uh, I think like the the there is a paradigm shift that needs to happen, which is away from the torture genius thing to allow people to take care of themselves. But so that's on the kind of the the public level, on the private level. I just I mean like we, we probably all know, yeah. but like it, I think it's good to still make space for people who are genuinely quite run down or like to do, do yeah, something. Yeah, but to also to help them rather than um, sort of push them. that even yeah. further and. Yeah, because then See. you're not helping them at all, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. No, so not, rather than making a big deal out of it, you actually um, help them. In conclusion, the fashion industry does romanticize the concept of the tortured genius, which has some influence on young upcoming creatives. However, this is beginning to change. It is important for more people to speak up about the concept of the tortured genius being detrimental to mental health. Please follow us at Alpha Omega London on Instagram, Facebook and Pinterest, where we'll be sharing superb artworks from a hand selection of artists within our network whose pieces depict their feelings on mental health. There you can see works from the incredibly talented Bobby Ray, Brendan Totten, Roal Mansouri, Stephanie Mikado, Patrick Gerard, and Clara Catley. Thank you for tuning in and a huge thanks to all our wonderful panelists. Please remember to rate five stars and subscribe. Our next episode, hosted by the lovely Tamara, serves up a more intimate and candid perspective on the topic. Stay tuned for more edifying discussions and to learn from her eclectic mix of panel speakers. <laughs>